Can any animals talk? Most animals have the ability to talk to other animals of the same species they make one kind of noise to attract a mate. Another to sound the alarm that a predator approaches, and so on. Animals can also communicate with each other through gestures, touch, and even by releasing certain odors. The more evolved the animal, the more complex their communication becomes. Animals that live in complicated social structures, with a leader and followers. Communicate the details about that social order to each other. As for whether animals can talk to humans. This simple question has sparked heated debate among scientists for many years. Experiments teaching chimpanzees sign language so they could communicate with their human observers resulted initially in exciting discoveries. It appeared that the chimps had learned to put together simple sentences from the signs they had learned. A closer look, however, revealed that the animals had simply learned to move their hands in ways that pleased the humans. The scientists, eager to believe communication with the chimps was possible, misinterpreted the animals' gestures. A few years later, in the mid-1990s, scientists in Atlanta, Georgia, worked with bonobo or pygmy chimps to teach them to associate words with dozens of different symbols on a keyboard. The scientists believe that these chimps learn to communicate following instructions and offering information at the level of a human toddler. While many experts agree that such basic communication between the smartest primates and human beings is possible, some linguists, or human language specialists, don't think that animals can learn our languages. They feel that studies like the ones done with the bonobo chimps simply show that the animals are very good at being trained. They can figure out which buttons to push to get food and other rewards from the scientists. Many pet owners and scientists have had great success teaching parrots. Particularly the African grey parrot, to talk. Parrots have outstanding mimicking abilities. They can imitate a human voice with surprising accuracy, and they can learn a great number of words. What is unclear, however, is whether parrots can really understand the words they say. Or if they are merely imitating what they hear. Why do butterflies and other insects fly from flower to flower? Butterflies and other insects fly from one plant to the next to feed on the sweet nectar and sometimes the pollen located in the interior of flowers. The sugar in nectar supplies insects with the energy they need. And pollen contains protein, fat, vitamins, and minerals. In the process of feeding, Many insects transfer pollen which sticks to their bodies from one plant's flower to another. Pollen, which is a fine powdery grain from a flower's male reproductive organ, must be transferred to the female reproductive organ of a flower for fertilization to take place and seeds to form.
What happens if I swallow chewing gum or other things that aren't food? When you accidentally swallow something that isn't food, you really shouldn't worry about it. Unless the item is sharp, which could tear tissue as it makes its way through the digestive system. Or unusually large, which could cause blockages. Once gum or other things enter your stomach, the powerful muscles in its walls crush and churn it. And the strong enzymes and acids produced there. Break down nearly everything into small particles that make a thick soup. The nutrients in the soup then pass into your bloodstream and travel to all the cells in your body. Those things that can't be broken down by the stomach, which includes parts of many plant foods. Or by more digestive juices in the small intestines are moved along as solid waste and leave your body as part of a bowel movement. So things accidentally swallowed are either processed by your digestive system or find their way into the toilet. So you shouldn't worry that the bug you swallowed will set up a new home inside you. Or that the watermelon seed that slipped down your throat will grow into a big fat watermelon inside your stomach. Your stomach just isn't a good place for living things. One of the digestive juices made there, in fact called hydrochloric acid is so powerful. That it can burn a hole though clothing and other things in its concentrated form. What causes people to pass gas? When there is too much air in your digestive system, there are two ways to get rid of it. It can exit from the top, through your mouth, in the form of a burp. Or it can exit from the bottom, through your anus, in the form of past gas, better known as a fart. Some of the gas in your digestive system comes from the air you swallow when you eat. While some of it is a natural byproduct of food digestion in your large intestine. When your intestine encounters foods that are difficult to digest including greasy. Or high fat foods it produces more gas than with foods that are digested easily. This gas travels through your intestine to your rectum and eventually passes out through your anus. While some may not like to admit it, everyone passes gas several times a day. How do insects make other sounds? Most of the time, insects make noise for mating purposes. Male insects produce sound to attract females, sometimes over long distances. A male insect can make such sounds by rubbing parts of his body together. The grasshopper, for instance, rubs the rough edge of his hind leg against the edge of a forewing. Similarly, the cricket scrapes his forewings together. Other insects have membranes that vibrate, which also produces sound. Why are some flying insects drawn to lights at night?
scientists aren't exactly sure why this happens. They have noticed that on clear nights, when the moon is visible, fewer insects gravitate to artificial lights. This observation has given rise to a theory, for millions of years. Insects have used the light of the moon, coming from one direction above to guide them during night flight. But artificial lights, which put out rays of illumination in all directions, confuse this ancient navigational system. Flying in a straight line is impossible when an insect is around an artificial light, which causes it to fly in circles. Can you figure out the temperature by listening to a cricket chirp? Yes the warmer the night, the faster a cricket sings. This phenomenon is so reliable that a mathematical equation can be used to calculate air temperature. Count the number of cricket chirps made in 13 seconds. And add 40, and you will get the temperature outside, in degrees Fahrenheit. Why should I wash my hands before I eat? An important entrance way into your body, your mouth is connected to your digestive and respiratory systems. Germs from the outside world should be prevented as much as possible from getting inside these and other systems. Where they can cause problems, keeping your body from running as it should. When you touch things or people that are carrying germs, it is easy to transfer them to your mouth while eating. The problem can be easily solved, though. By washing your hands before you eat about two minutes in warm, soapy water does the trick. What causes a burp? When you get food and drink into your airway, problems occur. But when too much air enters your digestive system, it's not a big deal. It just comes back up in the form of a burp. Sometimes a person takes in gulps of air when he or she eats or drinks too fast. Gum chewing can also lead to swallowed air. At other times, the food or drink like soda pop, for example is responsible for the burp. Filled with carbon dioxide gas to make it bubbly, soda releases air once it's in your stomach. Which animal has the shortest life? Many insects have very short lives, existing for only a few days. The mayfly has the shortest lifespan. In the adult stage, the mayfly often lives just a few hours long enough to mate and for the females, to deposit their fertilized eggs. Male mayflies perform an acrobatic mating dance over water as the sun goes down. They are then joined in the dance by the females.
Mayflies, also called fish flies, arrive in swarms in areas near bodies of fresh water. The pre-adult stages are aquatic, meaning they live in water. They coat streets and driveways and cling to screen doors and cars. While their fishy odor is unpleasant, the presence of mayflies indicates that the body of water is healthy. Why are some animals active only at night? Many animals, including lots of large predators, are diurnal. Meaning they are active during the day and sleep at night. Others are nocturnal sleeping throughout the day in burrows. Dens, caves, or trees emerging at night to find food. Nocturnal animals that are predators use the cover of darkness to hunt their prey without being seen. Those that are prey can also use the darkness to hide. In general, there is less competition for food at night. In desert climates, nights have the added advantage of being cooler. Many animals spend the hottest part of the day sleeping and conserving energy, coming out in the cool night air to hunt for a meal. Nocturnal animals have special adaptations that allow them to function in darkness. Several nighttime creatures, including owls and cats, have eyes that are a certain shape and have a particular kind of cell that helps them see with very little light. Bats, the only flying mammals, are usually nocturnal, and some species get around in the dark by using a kind of sonar called echolocation, the bats make sounds that bounce off nearby objects. And when the sound waves return they carry information about the location and size of those objects. Good hearing and senses of smell also come in handy for nocturnal animals. Some animals leave a scented trail, excreting fluid produced in glands in their bodies. To make it easier for them to find their way back in the dark. Are spiders insects? Many people think of spiders as insects, but actually they are classified in a separate category. Spiders are part of a group called arachnids, which also includes mites, ticks, and scorpions. Arachnids share many features with their arthropod cousins. But they differ in that they do not have antennae. Also, spiders have eight legs, insects have six. And their bodies are segmented into two parts, insects' bodies have three parts. Are spiders insects? Many people think of spiders as insects, but actually they are classified in a separate category. Spiders are part of a group called arachnids, which also includes mites, ticks, and scorpions. Arachnids share many features with their arthropod cousins. But they differ in that they do not have antennae. Also, spiders have eight legs, insects have six. And their bodies are segmented into two parts, 
Insects' bodies have three parts. Can spiders fly? Spiders do not have wings and cannot, technically, fly. Several types of spiders, however, can travel long distances through the air by a process called ballooning. The spiders spin long strands of silk that are caught by the wind, carrying the spiders along the currents. Spiders can travel far by this method, as far as hundreds of miles. And in some cases they can fly as high as 2,600 feet, 800 meters. One spider was even recorded at an altitude of 15,000 feet, 4,572 meters. Can spiders fly? Spiders do not have wings and cannot, technically, fly. Several types of spiders, however, can travel long distances through the air by a process called ballooning. The spiders spin long strands of silk that are caught by the wind, carrying the spiders along the currents. Spiders can travel far by this method, as far as hundreds of miles. And in some cases they can fly as high as 2,600 feet, 800 meters. One spider was even recorded at an altitude of 15,000 feet, 4,572 meters. How do spiders spin webs? Not all spiders spin webs, but most do. The webs can be spun into many different shapes, and they are used to protect eggs. Catch insects for food, or move a spider through the air. Most spiders possess three pairs of tube-like spinnerets near the ends of their bodies that produce a fluid that hardens as it is drawn out into silky threads. Spider webs look delicate, but they are actually very strong. When compared with an equal amount of steel, spider silk is five times stronger. Spider webs do not last long they are damaged by the capture of prey or by weather conditions. And some webs simply dry out after a day or two. Some spiders need to spin a new web every day, a task that can take about an hour. Rather than spin a web, certain spiders spin a silk tube with a trap door at one end. They hide in the tube until they feel the vibrations of a passing insect. Then they dart out and capture their meal. How do spiders spin webs? Not all spiders spin webs, but most do. The webs can be spun into many different shapes, and they are used to protect eggs. Catch insects for food, or move a spider through the air. Most spiders possess three pairs of tube-like spinnerets near the ends of their 
bodies that produce a fluid that hardens as it is drawn out into silky threads. Spider webs look delicate, but they are actually very strong. When compared with an equal amount of steel, spider silk is five times stronger. Spider webs do not last long they are damaged by the capture of prey or by weather conditions. And some webs simply dry out after a day or two. Some spiders need to spin a new web every day, a task that can take about an hour. Rather than spin a web, certain spiders spin a silk tube with a trap door at one end. They hide in the tube until they feel the vibrations of a passing insect. Then they dart out and capture their meal. Do spiders really eat the bugs they catch in their webs? Yes, most spiders live on insects and other related arthropods. Very large spiders can capture small birds and snakes in their silk traps. Spiders know they've made a catch because they can feel the vibrations. Caused by struggling bugs caught in their strong, sticky webs. Sometimes spiders tightly wrap their prey in silk to subdue them. They usually kill their prey by injecting them with a paralyzing poison or venom that they produce. Do spiders really eat the bugs they catch in their webs? Yes, most spiders live on insects and other related arthropods. Very large spiders can capture small birds and snakes in their silk traps. Spiders know they've made a catch because they can feel the vibrations. Caused by struggling bugs caught in their strong, sticky webs. Sometimes spiders tightly wrap their prey in silk to subdue them. They usually kill their prey by injecting them with a paralyzing poison or venom that they produce. Why don't spiders get stuck in their own webs? Some of the strands of a web are made of a different kind of silk that is not sticky. And spiders walk across these. But if a spider should happen to fall into the sticky strands, an oily covering on its body keeps it from getting caught. Why don't spiders get stuck in their own webs? Some of the strands of a web are made of a different kind of silk that is not sticky. And spiders walk across these. But if a spider should happen to fall into the sticky strands, an oily covering on its body keeps it from getting caught. How large is the world's biggest spider? The largest known spiders in the world are the goliath bird-eating spiders. 
which live in the coastal rainforests of northeastern South America. They can become as big as dinner plates. The largest recorded specimen had a leg span of 11 inches, 28 centimeters. This spider, a type of tarantula, has a somewhat misleading name. So-called bird-eating spiders don't usually eat birds but instead dine on snakes, frogs, and insects. How large is the world's biggest spider? The largest known spiders in the world are the Goliath bird-eating spiders, which live in the coastal rainforests of northeastern South America. They can become as big as dinner plates. The largest recorded specimen had a leg span of 11 inches, 28 centimeters. This spider, a type of tarantula, has a somewhat misleading name. So-called bird-eating spiders don't usually eat birds but instead dine on snakes, frogs, and insects. Which spiders are poisonous to people? Most spiders are capable of injecting venom into the animals they bite. But only a few can cause harm to humans. Two spiders most often associated with harmful bites are the black widow and the brown recluse. The black widow can be found all over the world, including throughout the United States, except Alaska. Females are far more common than males, the male usually gets eaten by the female after mating. Their shiny black bodies have red markings on the underside that are frequently in the shape of an hourglass. Black widows feed on insects, but they will occasionally if they feel threatened bite a human. A bite from a black widow, while it can cause a person severe pain and nausea, is not generally life-threatening. The brown recluse spider can most commonly be found in the southern and western United States. But it can also be seen in the northern states. A bite from this small spider may not be immediately detected. But after a few hours, a painful blister may form. The wound can take several weeks to heal. In very rare cases, the bites of brown recluse spiders have been known to cause death in humans. These shy spiders are not aggressive and generally only bite when they are disturbed or handled. The funnel weaver spider, found in southeastern Australia, and certain kinds of tarantulas that live in Africa and South America have also been known to cause harm to humans. The Brazilian huntsman is believed to be the spider with the most toxic poison it would take only 0.0000021 ounces. 0.006 milligrams of this spider's venom to kill a mouse. If a spider bite occurs, the best thing to do is to try to collect the spider so it can be identified and to see a doctor as soon as possible. Most spider bites are harmless, though mildly annoying.
which spiders are poisonous to people. Most spiders are capable of injecting venom into the animals they bite. But only a few can cause harm to humans. Two spiders most often associated with harmful bites are the black widow and the brown recluse. The black widow can be found all over the world, including throughout the United States, except Alaska. Females are far more common than males, the male usually gets eaten by the female after mating. Their shiny black bodies have red markings on the underside that are frequently in the shape of an hourglass. Black widows feed on insects, but they will occasionally if they feel threatened bite a human. A bite from a black widow, while it can cause a person severe pain and nausea, is not generally life-threatening. The brown recluse spider can most commonly be found in the southern and western United States. But it can also be seen in the northern states. A bite from this small spider may not be immediately detected. But after a few hours a painful blister may form. The wound can take several weeks to heal. In very rare cases, the bites of brown recluse spiders have been known to cause death in humans. These shy spiders are not aggressive and generally only bite when they are disturbed or handled. The funnel weaver spider, found in southeastern Australia, and certain kinds of tarantulas that live in Africa and South America have also been known to cause harm to humans. The Brazilian huntsman is believed to be the spider with the most toxic poison it would take only 0.0000021 ounces. 0.006 milligrams of this spider's venom to kill a mouse. If a spider bite occurs, the best thing to do is to try to collect the spider so it can be identified and to see a doctor as soon as possible. Most spider bites are harmless, though mildly annoying. Are worms insects? While some insects are worm-like in their immature, or larval, stage. The invertebrate creatures classified as worms are not insects. There are many different types of worms, in the earthworm category alone, there are thousands of species. Earthworms are very beneficial little animals. They are part of the diets of a huge variety of birds and other animals. And they also help keep the soil they live in healthy and nutritious for plants. The tiny tunnels created when worms burrow into dirt, they're actually eating the dirt as they go. Help the roots of plants get more nutrients, air, and water. Even the worm's manure, called worm castings, is beneficial, it's a great fertilizer. Earthworms are hermaphroditic, meaning that each worm has both male and female sex organs. A single worm is not capable of reproduction. However each worm still needs a partner in order to get its eggs fertilized. While earthworms cannot actually hear or see, they can pick up vibrations and can sense light. The species of earthworm most common in the United States is rather small. 
these usually grow to be about 10 inches, 25 centimeters, long. There is a species found in Australia, however, that can be as long as 11 feet, 3.3 meters. Are worms insects? While some insects are worm-like in their immature, or larval, stage. The invertebrate creatures classified as worms are not insects. There are many different types of worms, in the earthworm category alone, there are thousands of species. Earthworms are very beneficial little animals. They are part of the diets of a huge variety of birds and other animals. And they also help keep the soil they live in healthy and nutritious for plants. The tiny tunnels created when worms burrow into dirt, they're actually eating the dirt as they go. Help the roots of plants get more nutrients, air, and water. Even the worm's manure, called worm castings, is beneficial, it's a great fertilizer. Earthworms are hermaphroditic, meaning that each worm has both male and female sex organs. A single worm is not capable of reproduction. However each worm still needs a partner in order to get its eggs fertilized. While earthworms cannot actually hear or see, they can pick up vibrations and can sense light. The species of earthworm most common in the United States is rather small. These usually grow to be about 10 inches, 25 centimeters, long. There is a species found in Australia, however, that can be as long as 11 feet, 3.3 meters. Why do worms come out after it rains? Go outside near any patch of dirt on a warm summer afternoon after a rainfall. And you are sure to find plenty of earthworms on driveways and sidewalks. Scientists are not certain why this happens. But the worms may emerge from the soil to escape from the rainwater that has filled their tunnel homes. While earthworms require a certain amount of moisture, they can drown if they're submerged in water. Unfortunately, their escape from the rain-soaked soil onto a warm driveway can also prove deadly. If the sun comes out before a worm can make it back to some dirt, it can get dried out. Why do worms come out after it rains? Go outside near any patch of dirt on a warm summer afternoon after a rainfall. And you are sure to find plenty of earthworms on driveways and sidewalks. Scientists are not certain why this happens. But the worms may emerge from the soil to escape from the rainwater that has filled their tunnel homes. While earthworms require a certain amount of moisture, they can drown if they're submerged in water. Unfortunately, their escape from the rain soaked soil onto a warm driveway can also prove deadly. If the sun comes out before a worm can make it back to some dirt, it can get dried out.
How many kinds of fish are there? There are around 25,000 different species of fish, with hundreds of new species being discovered every year. Of all the vertebrate groups including fish, mammals, reptiles, amphibians, and birds fish are the most diverse. Most fish have scales, but some do not. Some are brilliantly colored, others blend in with the muddy sea bottom or the plants they live amongst. And certain fish can even change their colors to match their changing environment. There are even fish that can glow, a function called bioluminescence. In the pitch black world of the deep sea. Some fish have sleek, torpedo shaped bodies with fins, some have spiny or puffed up bodies. Others are flat and still others have long, snake-like bodies. The largest class of fish by far are the bony fish, or osteichthyes. This class includes most of the fish that people catch for fun and for food. Like salmon, trout, tuna, sole, and perch. All bony fish have a skeleton that is at least partly made up of bone. And most have plate-like scales, a cover over their gills, and a swim bladder. Which is a sac filled with gas that the fish can empty or release to control how closely they swim to the surface. The bony fish range in size from the goby which is one of the world's smallest vertebrates at about one half inch, one centimeter, in length. To the enormous whale sharks, which can get as long as 50 feet, 15 meters. Among the most fascinating classes of fish are the cartilaginous fish. Or chondrichthyes, including sharks and rays. Chondrichthyes have skeletons made of cartilage instead of bone. Cartilage is an elastic tissue that is more flexible than bone but can still provide support. Pinch the tip of your nose, and you'll see what cartilage feels like. Sharks have scales, but not like the ones found on bony fish. Shark scales feel rough like sandpaper, and they are made of a material similar to teeth. In fact, the teeth of sharks are actually modified scales. Sharks usually have powerful tails, a blunt snout, and powerful jaws with multiple rows of teeth. If a shark loses teeth while feeding or fighting, new teeth from the back rows will move to the front. Many people think of sharks as savage and dangerous. But in fact only a small number pose a threat to people. While some sharks can get extremely large, most species are smaller than 3 feet, 1 meter, in length. With the smallest shark, the dwarf dogfish, measuring only about 8 inches, 20 centimeters, long. Another type of chondrichthyes, the rays, have wide flat bodies with the eyes on top and the mouth and gills underneath. They live at the bottom of the ocean, moving slowly through the water by gracefully flapping their wing-like fins. While many rays are harmless to humans, some such as stingrays, have narrow tails with sharp, poisonous spines. If the stingray feels threatened, it can whip its spiny tail at its enemies. 
causing extremely painful and sometimes severe wounds. Rays range in size from a few inches to more than 20 feet, 6 meters, in width. Another class of fish, known as the jawless fish, or agnatha, includes lamprey eels and hagfish. Many of these primitive species are parasites, meaning they live off other organisms. Lampreys in particular have caused major problems for commercial fisheries. Destroying large numbers of trout and other fish in the Great Lakes and other regions of the United States. They have long, eel-like bodies and round, jawless mouths. They attach onto their prey by suction, biting into a fish's flesh with their small, sharp teeth. Their skeletal structure consists only of a cord made of cartilage. Called a notochord, running the length of their bodies. How many kinds of fish are there? There are around 25,000 different species of fish, with hundreds of new species being discovered every year. Of all the vertebrate groups including fish, mammals, Reptiles, amphibians, and birds fish are the most diverse. Most fish have scales, but some do not. Some are brilliantly colored, others blend in with the muddy sea bottom or the plants they live amongst. And certain fish can even change their colors to match their changing environment. There are even fish that can glow a function called bioluminescence. In the pitch black world of the deep sea. Some fish have sleek, torpedo shaped bodies with fins, some have spiny or puffed up bodies. Others are flat, and still others have long, snake like bodies. The largest class of fish by far are the bony fish, or Ostyctyes. This class includes most of the fish that people catch for fun and for food. Like salmon, trout, tuna, sole, and perch. All bony fish have a skeleton that is at least partly made up of bone. And most have plate like scales, a cover over their gills, and a swim bladder which is a sack filled with gas that the fish can empty or release to control how closely they swim to the surface. The bony fish range in size from the goby, which is one of the world's smallest vertebrates at about one half inch, one centimeter, in length, to the enormous whale sharks, which can get as long as 50 feet, 15 meters. Among the most fascinating classes of fish are the cartilaginous fish or chondrichthyes, including sharks and rays. Chondrichthyes have skeletons made of cartilage instead of bone. Cartilage is an elastic tissue that is more flexible than bone but can still provide support. Pinch the tip of your nose and you'll see what cartilage feels like. Sharks have scales, but not like the ones found on bony fish. Shark scales feel rough, like sandpaper, and they are made of a material similar to teeth. In fact, the teeth of sharks are actually modified scales. Sharks usually have powerful tails, a blunt snout, and powerful jaws with multiple rows of teeth. If a shark loses teeth while feeding or fighting, 
new teeth from the back rows will move to the front. Many people think of sharks as savage and dangerous. But in fact only a small number pose a threat to people. While some sharks can get extremely large, most species are smaller than 3 feet, 1 meter, in length. With the smallest shark, the dwarf dogfish, measuring only about 8 inches, 20 centimeters, long. Another type of chondrichthyes, the rays, have wide. Flat bodies with the eyes on top and the mouth and gills underneath. They live at the bottom of the ocean. Moving slowly through the water by gracefully flapping their wing-like fins. While many rays are harmless to humans, some. Such as stingrays, have narrow tails with sharp, poisonous spines. If the stingray feels threatened, it can whip its spiny tail at its enemies. Causing extremely painful and sometimes severe wounds. Rays range in size from a few inches to more than 20 feet, 6 meters, in width. Another class of fish, known as the jawless fish, or agnatha, includes lamprey eels and hagfish. Many of these primitive species are parasites, meaning they live off other organisms. Lampreys in particular have caused major problems for commercial fisheries. Destroying large numbers of trout and other fish in the Great Lakes and other regions of the United States. They have long, eel-like bodies and round, jawless mouths. They attach onto their prey by suction, biting into a fish's flesh with their small, sharp teeth. Their skeletal structure consists only of a cord made of cartilage. Called a notochord, running the length of their bodies. How can fish breathe underwater? Just like people and, indeed, all animals. Fish need to take in oxygen and release carbon dioxide to survive. And while oxygen isn't as plentiful in water as it is in the air, there is enough dissolved oxygen in water to allow fish, and all other water creatures, to live. Fish conduct the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide with the help of gills. Breathing organs consisting of flaps of tissue located on the outside of the fish's body. Gills are loaded with tiny blood vessels called capillaries, it is these vessels that take in oxygen from the water and transport it to other blood vessels that distribute it where it's needed in the fish's body. The gill capillaries also bring carbon dioxide from other vessels to the gills, where it is then returned to the water. How can fish breathe underwater? Just like people and, indeed, all animals. Fish need to take in oxygen and release carbon dioxide to survive. And while oxygen isn't as plentiful in water as it is in the air, there is enough dissolved oxygen in water to allow fish, and all other water creatures, to live. Fish conduct the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide with the help of gills. 
breathing organs consisting of flaps of tissue located on the outside of the fish's body. Gills are loaded with tiny blood vessels called capillaries, it is these vessels that take in oxygen from the water and transport it to other blood vessels that distribute it where it's needed in the fish's body. The gill capillaries also bring carbon dioxide from other vessels to the gills, where it is then returned to the water. If fish breathe oxygen, why can't they survive on land? Some fish can breathe on land. Of these, a few actually must breathe air. These are called obligate air breathers. Others, like the eel-like lungfish, the bowfin, and the gar, are adapted to breathe either air or water. These fish probably evolved to breathe air because they live in warmer water where oxygen is present in smaller amounts. For the most part, however, fish must get their oxygen from water and not from air. If such fish are taken out of water, they suffocate. Fish are able to get oxygen from water through the many tiny blood vessels spread over the surface area of their gills. When fish are out of water, their gill arches collapse. And the blood vessels are no longer exposed to the oxygen in the air. Even fish that can breathe air must still live primarily in the water because it is in water that they are capable of movement. If they can't move, they can't get food or escape from enemies. If fish breathe oxygen, why can't they survive on land? Some fish can breathe on land. Of these, a few actually must breathe air. These are called obligate air breathers. Others, like the eel-like lungfish, the bowfin, and the gar, are adapted to breathe either air or water. These fish probably evolved to breathe air because they live in warmer water where oxygen is present in smaller amounts. For the most part, however, fish must get their oxygen from water and not from air. If such fish are taken out of water, they suffocate. Fish are able to get oxygen from water through the many tiny blood vessels spread over the surface area of their gills. When fish are out of water, their gill arches collapse. And the blood vessels are no longer exposed to the oxygen in the air. Even fish that can breathe air must still live primarily in the water because it is in water that they are capable of movement. If they can't move, they can't get food or escape from enemies. Is there anything wrong with thumb sucking? During a child's early years, thumb sucking is not a problem. In order to survive, all babies are born with sucking reflexes that help them. 
Feed right away on milk from the mother's breast or formula from a bottle. From the earliest moments. An infant associates sucking with milk filling his or her empty stomach and a feeling of comfort. When not feeding, a baby may frequently suck his or her thumb. Fingers, or a pacifier to get that sense of comfort again. The habit often continues in young children when they are bored or frustrated or trying to get to sleep. Many children have a hard time breaking this habit. About 10% of school age children in the United States 2.4 million suck their thumbs. While thumb sucking doesn't cause problems in very young children who still have their baby teeth. It can have an effect on the bite of older kids who have their permanent teeth. Thumb sucking can push upper teeth forward and lower teeth back so that the top teeth and bottom teeth don't line up the way they should. At this point, children should be strongly encouraged to give up their habit. An older child may want to stop thumb sucking and be more grown up. Especially if he or she feels some pressure from friends at school. But many kids go back to sucking their thumbs when under stress, or when they're sleeping. Keeping thumb sucking children happy and busy, rewarding their efforts to stop. And even using reminders like a piece of tape wrapped around the thumb may help them quit the habit. How do spiders spin webs? Not all spiders spin webs, but most do. The webs can be spun into many different shapes, and they are used to protect eggs. Catch insects for food, or move a spider through the air. Most spiders possess three pairs of tube-like spinnerets near the ends of their bodies that produce a fluid that hardens as it is drawn out into silky threads. Spider webs look delicate, but they are actually very strong. When compared with an equal amount of steel, spider silk is five times stronger. Spider webs do not last long they are damaged by the capture of prey or by weather conditions. And some webs simply dry out after a day or two. Some spiders need to spin a new web every day, a task that can take about an hour. Rather than spin a web, certain spiders spin a silk tube with a trap door at one end. They hide in the tube until they feel the vibrations of a passing insect. Then they dart out and capture their meal. Why do mosquito bites itch? with her long, slender mouth parts. A female mosquito pierces the skin of her victim in order to suck its blood. She injects a substance that keeps the blood from clotting, an anticoagulant, before she drinks her fill. This foreign substance in the blood activates the victim's immune system. Causing an allergic reaction around the bite. This reaction causes the swelling and itching that drive us crazy. Why do teeth fall out?
Normally, only baby teeth fall out. And they do so when permanent teeth push up from below to take their place. As the permanent teeth push up, they destroy the roots, which are buried in the gums, of baby teeth. Without roots to anchor them to the jawbone, teeth become loose and fall out. Permanent teeth can fall out, too, when disease or injury destroys their roots. How can fish breathe underwater? Just like people and, indeed, all animals. Fish need to take in oxygen and release carbon dioxide to survive. And while oxygen isn't as plentiful in water as it is in the air, there is enough dissolved oxygen in water to allow fish, and all other water creatures, to live. Fish conduct the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide with the help of gills. Breathing organs consisting of flaps of tissue located on the outside of the fish's body. Gills are loaded with tiny blood vessels called capillaries, it is these vessels that take in oxygen from the water and transport it to other blood vessels that distribute it where it's needed in the fish's body. The gill capillaries also bring carbon dioxide from other vessels to the gills where it is then returned to the water. How large is the world's biggest spider? The largest known spiders in the world are the Goliath bird-eating spiders which live in the coastal rainforests of northeastern South America. They can become as big as dinner plates. The largest recorded specimen had a leg span of 11 inches, 28 centimeters. This spider, a type of tarantula, has a somewhat misleading name. So-called bird-eating spiders don't usually eat birds but instead dine on snakes, frogs, and insects. Why don't spiders get stuck in their own webs? Some of the strands of a web are made of a different kind of silk that is not sticky. And spiders walk across these. But if a spider should happen to fall into the sticky strands, an oily covering on its body keeps it from getting caught. Can spiders fly? Spiders do not have wings and cannot, technically, fly. Several types of spiders, however, can travel long distances through the air by a process called ballooning. The spiders spin long strands of silk that are caught by the wind, carrying the spiders along the currents. Spiders can travel far by this method, as far as hundreds of miles. And in some cases they can fly as high as 2,600 feet, 800 meters. One spider was even recorded at an altitude of 15,000 feet, 
4,572 meters. Can some animals grow a new limb after one has been cut off? There are many creatures that have the ability to replace body parts that have been lost. In fact, this process, called regeneration, happens in all living things at some level. Life is not possible without regeneration. Generally, the more complex the organism, the less dramatic the regeneration. Human beings can replace old skin cells with new ones, for example. While a certain species of flatworm can regenerate a new head and tail basically a whole new worm from any one of its segments. A hydra, a freshwater invertebrate with a tube-like body that has several tentacles at one end. Has such amazing regenerative ability that an entirely new hydra can be regrown from just a tiny fragment of the animal. Several insects, if they lose a limb before they reach their adult stage, can grow a new one. Crustaceans like crabs and lobsters can replace lost claws or legs with new ones. Even some vertebrates, which are more highly developed than invertebrates, are capable of some amazing regeneration. Bony fish, a group that includes salmon, tuna, and most other creatures we think of as fish, can regrow a fin though the group of fish that includes sharks cannot. Some amphibians can replace lost limbs with new ones. While some lizards can grow a new tail if the old one gets cut off. Birds cannot grow new limbs, though their ability to replace old. Feathers and sometimes beaks with new ones is a type of regeneration. The regeneration that mammals are capable of is more modest deer produce new antlers every year. For example, but no mammal can regrow a new limb or tail. What are wisdom teeth? Your four wisdom teeth are the last of your permanent teeth to appear. These molars, located at the back of the jaw, come in between the ages of 17 and 21. They emerge around adulthood along with the wisdom that supposedly comes with maturity which explains their name. In a lot of people, though, one or more of these teeth never come up. Usually because there is not enough room on the jawbone. Long ago, primitive people had longer jaws that held these extra molars that were so important for chewing the tough meat that made up most of their diets. But as prehistoric men and women evolved and their brains became larger, the shape of their skulls changed, too which included a shortening of the jawbone. So now we have an extra set of teeth not essential for our refined diets. And we have very little room in which to grow them. Wisdom teeth can cause problems whether above or below the gum surface. They can be difficult to keep clean and sometimes cause infections. Many people have their wisdom teeth removed before such problems occur.
If I eat too much food will I get fat? Your body needs food to provide it with the energy it needs to run smoothly and to grow and repair itself. All of this requires calories, which is a measurement of energy. Food provides the calories that make the body run. The amount of calories that a person needs depends a lot on how active he or she is and on whether that individual is still growing. Even though they are smaller than adults, children need comparatively more calories. Because they are so physically active and are always making new body tissue as they grow. If you eat a lot more calories than your body needs for the energy you use each day. Your body will store the extra calories as fat. Having a lot of body fat greatly increases your chances of getting a lot of different diseases. The easiest way to guard against being overweight is to lead a physically active life. Keeping fit through regular exercise like bicycling, swimming. Or participating in team sports like basketball will burn up the calories you eat, keeping you trim. Regular exercise also keeps joints and muscles flexible and strong and the heart and lungs healthy. Exercise seems to make the brain work better, too. In order to lose weight, you have to eat less and exercise more. If you burn more calories than the amount you take in through food each day. Your body will use your stored fat for the energy it needs, and you will lose weight. Increasing your physical activities is one way to accomplish this, another way is to change your diet. By not eating junk food food and drink that are high in fat and sugar but have few of the nutrients that your body needs you will be able to reduce the calories that you take in. Concentrating on foods that are good for you. But remember, the object of dieting is good health, not skinniness. People who make themselves too thin by not eating enough can have very serious health problems. What does it mean when an animal is extinct? Extinction happens when a species of plant or animal dies out completely. Extinction is a permanent state, once a species is extinct, it cannot be revived. Scientists believe that extinction usually occurs when a species cannot adapt to major changes to its environment. Some species adapt dramatically to such changes, and in doing so they become an entirely new species. Meaning the species they evolved from becomes extinct. The actions of human beings have caused numerous extinctions. At one time many people believed that Earth's resources fresh water, trees, fuel sources, animals used for food were unlimited. People have hunted or fished for an animal in such great numbers that the deaths outnumbered births. And the species could not survive. Tearing down forests or filling in swamps to build homes, golf courses, or shopping malls has had a great impact on animal life, many animals can no longer survive if their habitat is destroyed. Pollution of the air, soil, and water has also been a factor in the destruction of many species. 
it's important to remember that while human beings have caused the extinction of many species, we also have the ability to protect and save endangered plants and animals. Wildlife preservation laws and organizations like the Sierra Club first arose in the late 1800s. After people began to realize the devastating impact their actions could have on animal species. Widespread hunting of the American bison, for example. Reduced the animal's population from 60 million in 1860 to only about 550 just 30 years later. Such a huge and fast reduction in the bison's numbers alarmed many people. In 1966 the U.S. Congress passed the important Endangered Species Protection Act. Which meant that animals whose populations were shrinking could be protected from hunters and land developers. That law, and many others passed since then, has generated controversy in situations where the building of a bridge or dam or airport could threaten an endangered species but would help the people living nearby. As the world's population continues to grow, with more and more people living in what used to be animal habitats, such conflicts are likely to increase. Of all the animal and plant species that have ever lived, far more than half are now extinct. On the other hand, new species develop and are discovered all the time. So a balance between death and new life is maintained. What causes hiccups? Hiccups are probably caused by eating or drinking too quickly or too much. Which leads to irritation of the diaphragm. The large sheet of muscles attached to your lower ribs that separates your chest from your abdomen. The stomach rests just below the diaphragm, which is the main muscle used during breathing. When you have hiccups, the diaphragm contracts more strongly than usual. Jerking and forcing you to take sudden noisy breaths. The sudden rush of air forces the flap at the top of your windpipe. Called the epiglottis, to shut quickly, resulting in the heek sound. People have all sorts of crazy remedies for curing hiccups, like startling a person or eating certain foods. Like peanut butter, but they usually go away by themselves after a few minutes. Some rare cases, however, do last for weeks, months, or even years. How does my voice work? Your vocal cords are stretched flaps of tissue located in your voice box. Or larynx, which sits at the top of your windpipe or trachea. Your voice box is located in your throat. And if you put your fingers on it while you talk or sing, you can feel it humming. When air from your lungs passes over your vocal cords they vibrate. Surrounding muscles open and close and stretch the vocal cords, changing their vibrations to produce a variety of sounds. The more stretched your vocal cords, the more rapidly they vibrate and the higher the sounds they make. Sounds made in your voice box are further changed when they are shaped by your throat. Tongue, cheeks, and lips, 
and even teeth, into speech or song. What is my tongue for? Without your tongue it would be nearly impossible to do three important functions, eat, taste, and talk. The tongue is a complex group of muscles that moves food around your mouth as you chew and finally molds it into a ball for swallowing. Just try eating anything without using your tongue. In addition, taste buds clusters of special cells located on the surface of your tongue are mostly responsible for your ability to taste food and drink. Although other parts of your mouth have some taste buds, too. Your 9000 or so taste buds can recognize four types of flavors, sweet, salty, sour, and bitter. Besides helping you enjoy food. Tasting is very important because it keeps you from eating food that has spoiled and is unsafe. Finally, your tongue along with your mouth and lips helps you to make the special sounds you use to speak. How many teeth do I have? You have two sets of teeth. The first set, your baby teeth, consists of 20 teeth. These teeth are small so they can fit in the small jaws of a young child. They usually break through singly or in pairs between the ages of 6 months and 30 months. At 6 years of age, a larger set of teeth begin to surface, slowly replacing your baby teeth. 32 new teeth will eventually line your growing jaws. The last coming in around the age of 18. These permanent teeth will perform all your eating tasks for the rest of your life. Your four front teeth, top and bottom, sharp incisors cut and tear off food when you bite. Along with your four pointed canine teeth. The flat top bicuspids, premolas, and molars near the back of your mouth crush and chew your food. Why are babies born without teeth? Babies don't have any teeth at first because they don't need them. They receive all their nourishment from liquid food breast milk or formula during their first few months. When babies are born their digestive systems are not yet fully mature and they cannot process solid food well. While capable of sucking, their mouths and tongues are not yet ready for the complicated process of chewing and swallowing solid food. Babies change quickly, though, and by about four months they need to eat some kind of solid food to get the calories they need to keep growing. But the food that they eat is soft or soupy because they still don't have any chewing teeth. Still, babies can use their gums and tongues pretty well to eat specially prepared solid foods. And gumming hard foods prepares babies for the time when they will have a full set of teeth in their mouths, at about two years old. <laughs> 